Missing continues on Dateline. How's this for a mystery? Imagine one day you find out that you are not who you thought you were, that just about everything you've ever known about yourself and your life is a lie. You don't even know your real name. Well, it happened to the young man you're about to meet, his identity stolen, missing, perhaps never to be found. And the strangest part of it all, the thieves were his own parents. We want you to meet a man for whom the past was a lie and the future is uncertain. Chip St. Clair grew up in a mysterious and abusive family, always on the run. We've heard about such fugitive adults before, but never from their children. We'll meet Chip St. Clair in a moment. First, his childhood filled with questions. All Chip St. Clair knows about his childhood is that it was filled with secrets, mostly about his father David, who claimed to be a decorated veteran, a Green Beret. At age five, Chip found out his last name wasn't even real. And then the moves began, dozens of moves, in the middle of the night, Chip not knowing where he'd wake up next. First of all, I got to say, for all you've been through and what's happened to you in your life, I really have a lot of admiration for you. I really do. Thank you. Help what kind of a childhood did you have? I had a very, uh, very um, abusive, he was very controlling, very abusive. You can imagine um, the type of person he was. There was, uh, he would say, you know, let's go swimming. So he'd take me in a swimming pool and he'd say, let's see how long you can hold your breath. And he'd just grab me by the shoulders and push me down and then stand on me. And he weighed about 220 pounds, you know, and I'd be clawing at his, at his, at his feet and, and trying to, you know, wiggle away and, and he wouldn't let me. And I'd just gasp and get up and he'd say, well, you, you held it pretty long that time, you know. And, and I would. Never I, thinking that he was terrorizing. No, you. and I'd start to cry and he'd say, don't you dare cry. Don't you dare cry, you know, and he, he would uh, threaten me, and I knew what he could do when he threatened, so I, I kept my mouth shut. I think that's how I survived. My very first memory of uh, life with him is um, I was cowering behind a, a lazy boy chair, and he was kicking my mother on the kitchen floor. She was curled up in a ball, he was kicking her in the stomach and grabbing plates and breaking them over her head, and she was crying for me to help her, and I was maybe five years old, just not knowing what to do, just t terrified. To say that your entire life is filled with abuse mm -hmm. is an understatement. Oh, definitely. His father ratcheted up the torment and taunted him with what Chip describes as near-death experiences. It was a terror he never got past. Like the time when he was eight, Chip says his father tossed him out of a rowboat into ice-cold water. Uh, I thought I was going to drown. I was crying. I was screaming. Please, stop, stop the boat, let me on, and he wouldn't. And I, I had to swim all the way back to shore. Or even more frightening, the time when they were living in this high-rise apartment building, and Chip says his father took him out on the balcony some 20 stories up. Pretending to shove his 11-year-old son over the railing, he told Chip to hold on while he pushed him. This sensitive boy escaped his brutish father by retreating into a world of poetry and literature. Shakespeare gave him Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet to hide in for a while. The characters seem so valiant, you know, in opposing the evil and, and opposing the bad, and, and they seem so real, and it just became a way for me to see a world that, that I wasn't seeing. I was seeing such violence and, and terror that, that this seemed uh, so honorable and, and just and beautiful. It took an outsider to this tightly wrapped family circle, Chip's high school sweetheart, to make him understand that his normal was nothing less than a daily nightmare. The girlfriend's name was Lisa, she and Chip began dating in their teens. In the beginning, Chip's parents welcomed her with open arms, she says. What a great family, she thought, and didn't understand why Chip was so on edge at home. And then in January 1998, everything blew up. It was meant to be a happy occasion, the birthday dinner at Chip's parents for Lisa, by now their son's recent fiance. The evening quickly soured with an argument between Chip and his father. The 22-year-old son was so insulted, he pushed back from the table to storm out of his parents' apartment. And his father got up, screams, 
hey, you get back here. And he, he chases after Chip. And he grabbed me around the neck and started choking me. I don't know what told me. You better get to that phone and call 911. And then he punched me in the face, threw me down, and, and eventually beat me and dislocated my shoulder. And I, I screamed. We ran outside without our shoes on in, in 20 degree weather. His mom came out and she said, come on guys, get back in. You know, David's okay now. I said, no, Leslie, I called the police. We're afraid right now. She said, oh my gosh, you called the police. It's all over. She was right. Yeah. Who would have known? Every ugly, festering secret in the St. Clair family had just crawled out from under a rock. Secrets that were so ugly, so dark, that when they were revealed, all their lives would change forever. I knew my whole life as I had known it was over. Chip learned the biggest secret of all. His parents weren't even married, and his father, David St. Clair, was really a convicted killer named Michael Grant an escapee from an Indiana prison. He'd served time there for stomping a child to death in 1970. The person who allegedly helped him escape, Chip's mother, Leslie. But the crumbling of Chip's family life as he knew it was only just beginning. Two months later, his mother was arrested too. She was accused of embezzling from an apartment complex the St. Clair's managed. When Chip had to clean out their apartment, he found this trunk filled with secrets. Secrets not about just the father now, but secrets about Chip himself, if that's indeed who he really was. The family had been on the run for 26 years when a dinner table argument led to the truth. And it wasn't until the truth was discovered that they could start to piece together their lives. Now in 1998, 22-year-old Chip, his world came crashing down when he found out that his father, who was raising him, was an escaped convict and also a murderer. Take a look at this. I always knew my father to be David St. Clair uh, until one night he assaulted me and dislocated my shoulder and um, was arrested. Uh, and when I got out of the hospital, I called a relative who informed me of his true identity, that he was really Michael Dean Grant, an escaped child killer, and had been in London for 26 years. After my father was arrested, I had um, access to this trunk he must have hidden from me my whole life. Chip began digging through family papers he found in this trunk and discovered more riddles about who he really was. I found a birth certificate that says Chip Anthony St. Clair, and you hold it up to the light, and it says Chip Anthony Carroll underneath. It's been typed over. Different surname. Um, and all these different clues and different things just started to make me wonder, was I even their child? Maybe I was somebody else's child. What are the answers? It's, it's kind of like looking at a puzzle uh, in the dark with a flashlight. You can only see some pieces of it. You don't know how they fit together. You don't know where to even start. I don't even really know who I am anymore. I've, I've completely, by finding out my father's identity, I've lost my own completely. Who am I? Oh, it's it's mind-boggling what you've been through. It's, it's just mind-boggling. And I hope, I'm going to talk to you later about it, I hope that maybe there's a way that we can look back and, and, and determine. I mean, it's one great thing that this coward, w woman abuser, child killer, abuser of you is behind bars, but I think you really like to know who you are. Yes, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that later. He's sitting in prison right now, but he's only going to be remanded to stay there until the end of his original sentence, which means he could get out of jail after having escaped, been out here on the run for 20 years, they put him back in jail for murder, well, sorry, for manslaughter, mm -hmm. and they can let him out of jail when? He can get out as early as April of next year, 2005. But this doesn't still answer the question of who you are. You started asking questions of this woman, who is said to be your mother. Did you not ask her if she would take a DNA test? You know, I'd asked, uh, how do I know you're my mother? And she said, well, I'm the one that raised you. No, that's not a definitive answer. And then she said, what do you think? I took you from a Kmart, from a shopping cart? And then I later on find a picture in, in this trunk of a little boy sitting in a Kmart shopping cart. A very murky past for a local man about to become clear. Is the man who raised Chip St. Clair his father or his kidnapper? 
Karen is back with the answer that 2020 Dateline and John Walsh couldn't get. Karen? Well, Carmen Chip St. Clair has just found out the man who raised him was a child murderer, an escapee from prison, running from the law for the past 25 years. He has avoided the media for years, but the defenders were able to convince Michael Grant to submit to a DNA test. Someday this was going to come out. Earlier, the defenders talked to Michael Grant, a self-confessed child killer who now is facing other serious questions. Is the boy he raised his own, or did he kidnap Chip St. Clair? Michael Grant holds all the keys uh, to, the, to the vast doors of mystery that I have. After years and years of requests from numerous media agencies, Michael Grant finally agreed to a DNA test when the defenders talked with him inside the central Indiana prison. Defender cameras caught up with Chip right before his DNA test. I guess I'm uh, a little anxious right now to finally find out the truth for some of the answers I've, I've been seeking. One day after the tests are complete, the defenders receive a copy of the DNA report and bring Chip to our local four studios to sit down and reveal the results. It's a moment he's been waiting for for a lifetime. With 99.99% certainty that Michael Grant is your dad. Okay. You know, it's obvious that uh, there's somebody that's missing here. What about the mother? What about Chip's mother? Where is she? There are a lot of questions. There's some speculation that his mother could be Leslie Weaver. Again, though, we are not sure because she would not submit to a DNA test. Chip's mother says she also does have a criminal record for embezzlement, and she could not be reached for the story. We have tried numerous times to try to track her down, but we do hear she's possibly in the Pontiac area. But as of now, he still has another missing link. Another story yet to be told. Another part of the story. Anyway. Very true. All right. Thank you, Karen. Well, Chip came back to the show to find out if the woman who raised him was really his mother. One of the things you asked us to do was to find out whether or not the woman that has said that she was your mom was your mom. And I'm going to tell you, um, you provided us with what? Just some hair um, from a brush? Uh, it, well, hair and um, saliva it's from an envelope. Saliva from an envelope that she had licked. I'm going to tell you, the lady we're looking for is no question your mother. Okay. So the DNA test came back that 99.998% sure that woman is your mom. Now it's a matter of finding her if you choose to, but that is truly your biological mother. So you know your biological mother and biological father. Now the question is, who is that little boy in those pictures? Exactly. And, and I have this weird feeling you're going to find out. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all you've done. It's a fascinating story, and i got to say it again. you got a lot of guts, buddy. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to use what I've been through and in to turn it into something positive, I'm trying to speak out about identity theft, about child abuse, about different issues that, that I've been through that people can relate to and, and show people that, you know, I'm not a victim of his anymore and I'm not going to be victimized, allow myself to be victimized by him. And um, if people have been through similar situations, not to just survive in life, but learn how to thrive. Absolutely. How do you reconstruct your life after this bombshell ignites in front of you? I try to uh, regroup and if, if I look at my, my life as a glass of knowledge, everything I ever had known, and I emptied that, and I have to refill that with positive things. I'm proud of who Chip St. Clair is becoming. So tell me what's happened since you were last. Well, I um, got involved with an organization called Justice for Children, and it's a nonprofit organization based out of Houston, um, started by Randy Burton in 1987. They have offices in Washington, D.C. and in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, they've asked me to be the regional director of a new chapter in Michigan. Excellent. Excellent. Just the things you've set up to do. A person like him, you, you, you would sit here and say, just knowing him as the man he was that you watched grow up, if he killed once, do you think he had Oh, he got Definitely. It's just a miracle that I survived. At 11. Could this man hold the key to a 30-year-old murder mystery in Oakland County? That question may be answered with a DNA test at an Indiana prison, and tonight you'll find out why, only on 7. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. The Oakland County Child Killer Task Force will be at the prison tomorrow to question Michael Dean Grant. Well, Stephen, I'm standing just outside the Westville Correctional Center here in Westville, Indiana, and tomorrow detectives from Michigan are going to be interviewing one of the prisoners here. The Oakland County child killer terrorized families in the mid-1970s, abducting and murdering four children. 
Now, 30 years later, the investigators have learned members of the Oakland County Child Killer Task Force plan to interview this man. 65-year-old Michael Dean Grant is locked up inside this prison in northwest Indiana for killing a child. And detectives want to know if he had other victims. He was just incredibly brutal. We have new developments in a story you saw first on 7 last night at 11. Police investigating the 30-year-old mystery of the Oakland County child murders had to put their interview of a convicted killer on hold today in Indiana. But Action News investigator Heather Catalo tells us he remains the new focus of the investigation. Members of the Oakland County Child Killer Task Force were supposed to arrive at this Indiana prison Wednesday afternoon to interview a convicted child killer. As the investigators first reported, detectives want to know if 65-year-old Michael Dean Grant abducted and murdered these four Oakland County children in 1976 and 77. But instead of meeting with Grant and getting a DNA sample, detectives received a phone call when they were halfway to the prison telling them the meeting had had to be postponed. Sources tell me officials here at the prison were not comfortable with all of the calls they were getting about this case from various other media outlets. So they told the detectives they would have to come back at a later time and interview Grant in secret.